Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about just an overview of mass storage. Um, so these are your HDDs and your non-volatile memory, which is like your SSDs. Okay, so the goals of today is to introduce um, hard disk drives or review them for those of you who already know. Uh, talk a little bit about non-volatile memory devices. Um, some connection methods of how we connect these drives to the actual computer um, and communicate with them, and a little bit about address mapping. Oops, too far. So um, hard disk drives, or HDDs, are also called magnetic disks, and that's because they use um, magnetic patterns to store information. They look like this. Um, so they have this arm here. Oops. They have this arm here, and this is these are the platters, um, and this arm moves over this to read the information that's stored at each individual spot. So in a little bit more depth, uh, this is really what it looks like. It's not just one um, platter, so each one of these are called platters, these disks. Uh, they look, they're like a CD. Um, so that it's not just one, there's several. Um, and there's this arm assembly that holds these read-write heads. So these, there's several read-write heads, one for each one of the platters. And so what these are going to do is they're going to position um, together. They move together. The arm, all of these heads move in unison. Um, they don't move asynchronously. And they're going to position, be able to help you position into the, um, disk, the drive uh, where you need to read the data from. And so a little bit more about the platters. The platters are actually um, uh, dissected into tracks. So each one of these inner, um, so it's shown in blue here, um, are tracks. And these tracks are further separated into sectors. Um, and so these sectors um, are fixed size, and that's usually that it's a transfer size. So it could be like 512 bytes. Um, which was the standard until 2010, and now they've moved to four kilobyte size sectors. Um, so these are sectors, kind of like your pages um, or your frames, and all of this, this whole kind of, um, if you combine all three of these tracks on each one of the platters, you're going to get, you're going to form a cylinder. And in fact, that's what it's called. So the cylinder that is formed, um, so all of the information per platter is called the cylinder. Um, and so of course, this is always uh, rotating, right? So it's rotating around and around. Um, and this is what allows us to read, reposition and read our hard, hard disk drives. And so if you hear your computer making funny noises, usually it's your HDD that's, that's spinning around and it's trying to access things. So some metrics that we like to look at when we talk about hard drive disks is one is the transfer rate. And so the transfer rate is the rate at which data flows between the drive and the computer. Um, and that's going to vary um, between hard drives. The second one is the positioning or random access time. And so this is the seek time plus the rotational latency. So what are these? So the seek time is the time to move the disk arm to the right cylinder. So we talked about cylinders, remember, so cylinders are here. So this is this movement from left to right here. So it's kind of, if you are familiar um, with record players, it kind of moves as a record um, player handle does. So that's the time to move the disk to the right uh, cylinder. So we're moving in um, to align with the right uh, track that we want. And the rotational latency is now, um, so now this motion here. So we're at the right track, so we're in the right cylinder, and now we need to move so that the correct sector, we'll say this is the sector, we need, that looks like a, well, that's a square. Um, we need to move it such that, or it needs to move such that it's underneath this head, and this head is what is going to read it, um, read the data that is sitting there. So that's the overall time, so that's, that's the random access time, that's how long it takes to actually, from a request come in, well not all the time, there's some more overhead we'll talk about, but 
um, most of the is actually moving this physical uh, mechanism in order to get it to be pointing to where you actually want it um, want to read the data from. So one uh, question you could ask is what happens if the head actually touches this magnetic disc because it's never actually touching it. So it's not like a record player in that sense. It's not actually touching it. It's hovering above it um, and it's reading the magnetic pattern in each one of the sectors to actually retrieve and store the data. So if, a, if the head ever touches, a head ever touches a magnetic disc, um, this is called a head crash. And this is pretty much game over. So this is the point. So your 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 disc is going to be um, pretty much in most cases beyond repair. So you'll have to replace your your disc at this point. So moving on to non-volatile memory devices or NVMs. So these operate they're electrical rather than mechanical. So there's no moving parts. Commonly, they're composed of NAND die um, semiconductor chips and a controller. So some ex uh, examples here are the sol our solid state drives, which probably most of you have in your laptop right now, um, and also USB drives, which I'm sure all of you have used. Um, so these are also called flash storage. So the pros of this, so they're faster, um, they're physically smaller, they consume less power. They, they are, um, okay, yeah, so then the cons are that they're more expensive, um, that data can't be directly overwritten, and we'll talk about this in a second, and usually you can't use the full capacity. So if you're buying a solid state drive, you might buy one that says it's 400 gigabytes. Well, really, its actual space may be larger. It may be like 512 gigabytes, but you can't use that full space, and we'll talk about why. So let's talk about the first one, a uh, claim that I made that data cannot be directly overwritten. It's true. So in hard drives, you can. Um, any place where you want, you can directly overwrite um, the data that's sitting there. With NMV, NVM um, devices, you cannot. Uh, so the way that NVM um, memory is, uh, how it looks, is it's configured into these blocks. So each one of these are blocks, and within the blocks are pages. And let's say in that one, this page here, uh, we want to say, okay, we want to erase this or overwrite this page. Um, but, you know, so it's within this block, and so what it has to do to rewrite over this page, um, it would have to, it, it can't. So all it can do is it can write this whatever, it can mark this page, let's say that this is a file um, that we want to, want to modify, okay? Um, so we open it, we modify it, and we save it, so we actually are not gonna be saving back to the same location. Um, we will actually have to rewrite it somewhere else that's free. And then this page here will get marked as invalid. Um, and life goes on. So you, what you're kind of seeing here is that some of these blocks may have these invalid pages, and so that kind of relates to um, what we talked about with internal fragmentation. So if you think of the block as a page, um, in when we're talking about paging, and now the whole block is not filled up with valid pages, and this causes some issues. Um, the solution to this was to create a garbage collector, which we'll talk about next. Um, so as a result, you, so as a result of this whole process here, um, and you don't actually get to use the full space. So um, solid state or NVM um, producers, what they do is they over provision. And what that means is that, um, do I have one on the next slide? Yeah, so they over provision, meaning that they separate a, se a separate space in the actual memory that you can't use and it's going to be used for these kind of swappings where you have an invalid page here 
and you want to, maybe you have a bunch of invalid pages, maybe you only have one valid page. So this is the only um, valid page. So this is a waste of a block, right? So at some point we want to rewrite the block such that we have our valid page and we don't have any of the non-valid pages. And what designers have done is that they've just created a separate space for this. Um, and this technique is called over-provisioning. So again, um, I gave you the example already, so you might see something that has a usable space of 400 gigabytes, but when you mount it and you look at it, you might see, okay, but it's 512 gigabytes. How come I can't use the full thing? So this is common with USB drives. I see this all the time. Um, it, this is what's going on. They have this over provisioning, provisioning such that you cannot use the space. It's used um, for the garbage collection. And what garbage collection is, is that there's a garbage collector that's controlled by the controller that um, goes around and it looks for invalid um, pages. And so if it finds too many, then it's going to rewrite the blocks such that, you know, it emits the invalid pages. And so that um, this extra space here allows it to kind of use it as like swapping space. Um, so that it can do this. And in doing this, so it may copy over that, so we talked about a, a page that had maybe just one valid page, uh, a, a block that had one valid page, so it may copy this block into um, this space and then create, so then clear that block, so completely erase that block, so that's this block, completely erase it and then copy in just the valid page. So it may do something like that. Um, so also to help identify which blocks have become valid or invalid pages, um, the NM NVM uses FTLs, or flash translation layers. Um, so these go and they mark things as valid, invalid, they keep track of all these things. Okay, so connection methods very quickly. Um, I may post other material for this for you to read more. Um, but usually, so HTDs are usually mounted, um, or usually connected via a bus, usually SATA. Um, and the M, since they're so fast, they don't, um, so in their, they can take a lot of IO really quickly because they don't have any moving parts um, and they can move things over a lot quicker. So they've developed a special connection called NVMe or an NVM Express to handle actually um, IO from a uh, NVM. And so all these transfers are um, handled by controllers. So you can see in this diagram that you have your disks here and you have this IO controller. So these this IO controller is what's talking to the disk and taking what the maybe the processor is asking for. Um, and talking to the disks and getting that back and then moving it through the bus and uh, where it needs to go. The last topic in this lecture is address mapping. So usually your um, HTD or your NVM are addressed as one large one dimensional arrays of logical blocks. Um, and these map to a certain sector or a certain semiconductor page in the NVMs. Um, if you didn't do it this way, what you would have to pass each time um, are listed here. So for an HD um, drive, you would have to pass a sector, a cylinder, and a head, right? So you'd have to tell it what head I want to be on, what cylinder to move it to, and then finally what sector that it needs to rotate to. For NVM, you'd have to send the following tuple. You'd have to tell it what chip, uh, what block, and then what page. So instead of this, um, these logical blocks are created such that, so they're one dimensional, so meaning that so they have one to one relationship. Um, and this makes it a lot easier to um, develop algorithms for. So you don't have to worry about these three things for either one of these, you just have to worry about logically what's the address. Some complications with address mapping. So one, there can be defective sectors and blocks. You may, in fact, um, when you order a brand new um, HDD, you may get a defective sector, very possibly, actually. 
Um, there's built-in um, protections for this, so uh, HTDs do um, forwarding, meaning that they identify a defective vector sector, <laughs> and um, in that logical address space, they the, the controller will, if it tries to access something that it knows is defective, then it will have a forwarding to forward it to the place in the actual HDD where it's being held, housed. The second thing um, that is mostly just for HDDs, 100% just for HDDs, is that um, the number of sectors per tract is not always constant. So as the, so this, the rings, right? So as you move outward, uh, there may be less sectors. So that, um, it, it, so, so that when it's spinning, um, it, it can kind of guarantee that it's going to take the same time in each one of um, the tracks to get to sectors. So when, of course, it's in this middle ring here, it's going to take less time um, to get to sectors if they're all the same amount of sectors um, because it's a very tight uh, ring. Whereas on the outer rings, it may take longer um, to get to sectors. So they might actually, I guess in that sense, they might actually increase uh, the number of, of sectors or decrease. So just to kind of um, deal with that issue. The third thing is that the disk manufacturers usually set up these mappings. So this logical space um, to the actual physical sectors, they set it up. So you don't really have too much control of it as a programmer. Um, you kind of have to deal with how they actually set it up. So at this point, I'd like to ask if there's any questions. Uh, please let me know, send me an email, um, and let me know what I can do to clarify things. Thanks.